H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. First class, uh, we have covered the basics. We learned about variables. We learned about how to create a Python file, okay, like a package and all. And then we learned about uh, operators, right? Now we're going to understand a good concept, a first awesome concept of Python, okay? I'll, I'll not say variables is a huge thing. The huge thing starts with collections okay that means data structures okay so few people look are comfortable with uh, the word collection few with data structure both is fine in books generally we use the word data structures okay so in python the first thing is why data structure and what is data structure so you need to collect objects you need to collect and consolidate object in a single object we see we saw that in arrays we saw in loops that we actually iterate through an arrays but frankly speaking python do not have arrays whatever you actually just saw is one of the data structure okay so today what we are going to do is we're going to go through four important data structures provided by python their properties what they do why they do that okay and what are the key functions okay so in that collection in that data structure we'll do that so python data structures Python data structures has four important types list which is ordered and index set which is unordered with no duplicates tuple which is unchanged you cannot change that data and dictionary key value pair let's try to imagine what kind of data generally we keep in such scenarios so list it's an ordered thing it's an index thing what does index really mean index means again the positions 0 1 2 3 and all those so every data is attached to one of the index well, with that so list is a basically ordered collection ordered because of index because of index it's ordered it's ordered with index we can see that okay now imagine the data what kind of data you can store in list frankly speaking you can keep anything there suppose you are reading any objects from the database all of them can go into a list correct Suppose you are taking a shopping cart items, all of them can go into list. Got it? Suppose you are taking um, what I can say, and then customer information, employee information, uh, store information, pharmacist information, banking domain, retail domain, telecom domain, anywhere. Whenever you can collect the data, you can collect in a list. List is a natural, simple, obvious kind of collection. Because we need the things in a single object and we need them in order. Got it? So that is a list. What is set? Set is unordered. There is no order required, but no duplicates. We don't need duplicates here. Okay? So what can be the things which are duplicate, not duplicates? Suppose I'm collecting zip codes of United States. Of course, I can go for order and index kind of thing, but really we do do you care about order? No. Actually, we need something with no duplicates, correct? So, no duplicates, that means the data which we do not care about the order, okay? The set is basically data which we do not care about the order, but we do care that we should not have a duplicate element into it, employee information. I don't actually worry about an order of an employee. It doesn't matter, employee will carry his own ID, correct? It doesn't matter whether it's ordered or not, but it definitely matters that there are no duplicates. Got it? So such things can go in this area. The shopping cart item goes here. No, shopping cart may have. So you may have two milk bottles. You have two juice boxes, right? So you have duplicates. So list is proper there, not here. Okay. Then the third one is tuple, which is unchangeable data. So there are some data. There is some data which is holding one time only kind of scenario that means let's say i'm holding uh, all my store numbers all my branch codes in my bank okay so if i'm doing that all my mobile tower stations all my pharmacies in united states 
that data will not gonna change so frequently correct it may be duplicate there may be duplicate there may not be i don't care about that but whatever we have it's not something which is changed across like time okay i will not change it in 5 minutes okay i might change i might add store but that's fine in a year i might add 10 stores 15 stores not more than that okay in bank branches branches may get added after like one year or two years something like that but overall the data remains unchanged correct that's kind of data is tuple okay and the last one is dictionary dictionary is nothing but key value pair customer id customer employee id employee store id store okay within a car let's say i'm actually have, having a customer information there is a first name and the value attached to it. okay then last name and value attached to it zip code and value attached to it so there is a key value pair always there is a key and a value so whenever we have such data we can we get dictionary so you got practical examples of all of them but then if i'm saying that things are getting stored or ordered or indexed or unchangeable or key valued inside this data structure what are the methods provided in such scenario would be that so let's take this examples one by one the things one by one okay and try to execute examples of it would be that so what i'm going to do is i'm just opening this one by one and explore so let's create our first list would be that so let's do that i also open the material in between but before that we need this so let's complete package creation and also new python package learn underscore day zero four and the first python file is test list okay so i have a test list here and you know what what is a list list is basically what you did in your loops okay so first thing i defined you an array right so that array is nothing but a list so how do you define the list so for that let's quickly open materials also This particular X map which you are looking at is basically for you. This is like one view of entire thing. One view of entire thing. If you open everything and you're gonna get a PDF, okay, which has this for all the things. So you just take a view, you just take a look at it, and you are done. Got it? So that's it. This that you don't have to actually go through a lot of pages and all those things. It's super simple, it's in front of you. In a single view, you can actually write or you can actually revise everything. Okay. And I, and, and I will recommend you this particular software called Xmind. It's free. You go ahead and download that. What you have to do is you just have to create such maps for all the technologies. It's amazing. If you have maps, it's very easy to actually prepare for interviews. Okay. So if you're learning through, let's say, threads, just write threads and then add the topics, add the subtopics, like what are the key methods, in that methods, what are the awesome functionalities you can look at. Good with this. So let's do that. So the first thing is Python collection. So declaring a list, how do you declare the list? So the list is declared with the help of square brackets. Okay. So list is a collection which is ordered and changeable. In Python, lists are written in square brackets. So if you want, you can line, you can actually add this line here in python the list are added in square brackets oops list are written in square brackets so that you don't have to even remember that you can just open this and you are done okay just make it as the first thing okay so list are written in square brackets access okay then we'll actually run it one by one so let's go ahead and write our first list got it 
So I will just say test list or sample list, sample list equals and square bracket in that I have all that uh, all those items. So you can actually have string, you can have integers, you can have characters, you can have objects. Okay, doesn't matter. So now the first one is I'm adding milk here. Okay, some shopping cart items. Then you can add salt. Okay, milk and salt doesn't go together. Third, some food items. What item? Okay, so these all are basically list. How do you access the list of so print? How do you access the list? Sample. So go ahead and read first line. Access item. Sample list one. So you can actually add. You can actually access the elements with the help of indexes. Correct. So index zero gonna be milk. Index one. Index two. Index three. You also know about iteration, don't you? You know that how to iterate with this. Okay, because we did this so for each item in sample list you're gonna print all the items okay so each item would be this you know how to iterate correct we'll take all the examples element and look how do you add something into the list okay so you just say sample list dot append so append is the function and then you can add a new item to it with this let's go ahead and do that we say sample list dot append and then you add new item so what you want, want to add append. got it and then print the entire list if means you if you actually give print statement to entire list sample list it's gonna print all the elements for you got it anyway we are doing that here but if you just provide that you will get this kind of operation like printed got it okay Add indexed element. So can you insert something at a particular position? You can do that. So insert one comma fruits. So that will happen. What will happen is now remember this. Every item in this list has a common has an index, correct? So now this one has zero index. This one has one, then two, and three. So suppose I want to insert sugar in here at position one. What I can do is I can actually provide sample list dot insert instead of append. So append is like appending at the end. So what is going to happen? Apple will be here. So instead of that, I can just say insert at position one. So at position one, sugar will be inserted. What happens to salt bar? Because salt is as position one as of now. What happens to it? What do you think? It will be removed, deleted, or it will be forwarded move forward what will happen this is option number one option number two what's your opinion what do you think correct correct yes exactly it will be moving towards next value simple as that it will be forwarded it will be moved next okay it will not be deleted remember you didn't ask for index list gave it to you right so it's it's this functionality Cool. So let's go ahead and add it. So suppose I'm saying sample list dot insert, and then you're gonna actually say one comma sugar, and you're gonna add sugar to it. That's insert. Next, remove the element. So we'll do that, but first we'll execute this one. Okay. So let's go ahead and run the test. Got it. So basically, this is milk salt curd potato and apple first is milk because you say that you need a zero zeroth index then you have uh, you added sugar okay so after adding sugar you actually iterated through it so you can say that milk sugar salt curd potato and apple so sugar is added here at the position one got it so that's accessing it with loops now third, now next one, remove element. Can I remove something? So you have two functions here. One is remove, okay, and specify the items. So which item you want to remove? It would be that. So sample list dot remove, and then you provide like I I don't want curd. Okay, so you can do that. You can also use pop function. So pop is for popping up at a particular index. So you can just say pop. But if you just use pop function without any index, it's gonna insert, it's gonna remove the last inserted value. 
So either you can give an index or it will actually remove the last inserted value. So I'll give index, not an issue. So I'll just remove zero. Got it? And after this two, two removals, we can print a list. And see the values. So first one is removing curd. Second one is removing milk. Okay. But if I just say uh, pop without any index, it's gonna remove the yeah, last index of it. Okay, so pop last index. So without this, without index, it will remove last value. Okay, good. Next, okay, you can use delete function also, but remember that delete is a Python function. Delete is not related to list. You can use delete anywhere. You can delete an object also. Okay. So DEL is a function and I will not recommend that. But I am taking an example just that I am just letting you know. So you can just use sample list. And then you just specify. Okay. I know I want to delete again position 1 let's say. Which is as of now sugar. Okay. And you can do this. By the way you can delete entire list. Okay, with a delete function. So delete function is responsible to delete any kind of object from Python memory. So it will delete sugar because you say sample list one delete. Got it? Check the length of it. So you can check the length with the help of length function again. So delete is not a Python, uh, delete is not a list function. Similarly, length is also not list function. So delete is Python function. Remember this. Similarly, length is also len is also a Python function. So it doesn't matter which collection or which data structure you are operating it on, it's gonna give you same result. So we will not take these examples again in other collections. Okay, we're gonna keep on here only. You can use this on any collection. Okay, so except tuple because tuples are unchangeable. Okay, so fine. So how do you do that? So you says the cell length and after that you're gonna pass sample list to it And you're gonna get the length. Okay, so you have to print that by the way. So print And then you just say Length Okay, so that you'll get the length here So length is 3 because there are 3 elements to it Fine I'll iterate. We already took an iteration example because that is the that is the thing which we already learned yesterday. So we just kind of revise that. Got it? So this is what these are the operations of list. What are the awesome things you can do? But main thing you have to remember is list has index. Say it doesn't. So I have another kind of collection which doesn't have an index at all. How do I access it? Okay? Because I am accessing or I am adding something with the help of indexes. How do I add something in set then? How do I remove something from set then? What does pop do with set then? Okay, so we're gonna learn that. So let's go ahead and create a new class which is say test set. Is there any question here? Position 2, where? Pop function is removing temporary. Pop function is removing the last value. Apple. Okay. No, it will actually remove it. It will not remove temporary. You can see that uh, Apple didn't actually appear next time. Okay. <coughs> what if sample is zero? If there are hundred, how do you count? You have length function. Okay, and you don't have to count. You don't have to count. Okay, so if you are going through such kind of collections which is actually having hundreds of elements, you don't generally access with the help of indexes. Okay. Push. Push is for queues. 
Right? So we don't actually use any kind of function like that. Okay. So sample did dot and we have push. We don't. This is for queues. If you work with active MQ and sending the messages to it and all those, you have push function there, not here. Okay. Cool. So let's create a set now. So test set. What is set? Let's come back here. We land. Okay. Set is a collection which is unordered and unindexed. In Python, set is written in curly braces. Okay. So we're gonna so we will write this. Sets are written in curly brackets, and we'll put it here. So that I'll give you this entire stuff, and you just have to look at it once and you're done. Okay. So set are written in curly brackets. Or not here. So let's create the first set and then we go through all of this. We'll do this. So let's go ahead. So I'm going to create a sample set equals. And we're going to try awesome things with it. So here again, I'm adding some stuff from list. By the way, one important stuff you should always remember list can have duplicate elements. There's no harm in that. And you can append multiple apples here. Okay, so multiple apples and you can still hold a list and at the time you will get two apples. No issues with that. Okay, and in our pop function, none of the apple got removed, but one is still there. Got it? So you can actually have multiple common elements, same elements. Can we do that in set? So let's take this example. So this is a set. Okay, let's take it one by one. Add an element to the set. You can do that with sample set dot add. Sample set dot. You have add function. No issue with that. You have adding an apple and you print it. Okay. Go ahead and run this. You're gonna get this one. Now remember this. There is no order. So it's unordered collection. So you added apple. It got first. But here also there is no order maintained. Milk, salt, curd, potato is saying curd, potato, milk, salt. There is no order. It's unordered collection. Now let's add apple again. Let's add these two statements again. And see what happens. Okay. No change. No change. It's not adding it. Next time this Again, the order is different, but it's not adding apple again. Why? Because no duplicates. It's not giving any error. Okay. No duplicates. Set ignores what I can say duplicate elements. Okay, it doesn't throw any error by the way. No error thrown. Got it? So it doesn't matter how many times you're gonna add it, nothing gonna happen. Okay. Iterate, you know that how to iterate. So for each item in sample set, this is gonna be same for everything. So each item. And then you're done. You're gonna get it fine now there is an exist function okay so exist was there in here also okay we are taking it here element exist exist is like whether that particular element exists in the collections okay so you can use this if let's say apple okay exist in so you are actually using it in sorry exist not exist it's in apple in Sample set. Remove the spaces. It's too many spaces. Sample set. You can use this in list also. I can just print apple exist. Now let's go ahead and copy this 
and oops let's just go ahead and copy this here you can do that here as well okay so here though it will be sample list okay that's completely fine this in function works everywhere all kind of collection provide you in function so in is you are checking whether this particular element is part of this collection got it so you can run this test list and you can see apple exists you can also run this for set and you'll get apple exist got it so you can actually use both the things so element exists you can check this with this guy and i'm going to add it here it will be sample set okay Okay, then uh, add to another set. Okay, there are many chances that you are actually adding multiple sets together. So if one set is adding into another, you can do that with the help of update function. So let's see, you have one more uh, set here, which is holding some other item. So another set, which is actually holding, let's say, brush, there is two brush. Okay, then floss, all kind of that stuff. Okay, toothpaste, all this. I want to combine them so you can do that. You can actually say samples. Okay, one more thing is whenever you are doing this update and adding another set to it, whenever you are doing this, the main set, the, the, the target set is sample set, and this is gonna change. Okay, so this is going to add a new element to it. So if I just print sample set now, the new sample set will hold the values from the other set also. So you will have a total set like this. Okay, so toothbrush, cut, salt, floss, and all those things. Got that? So that's addition of. We generally do not do that unless and until it's like a subset of something. We generally don't do that. Length function, I'm not taking that example, it's there, you can do that. Okay, you can have delete function also, you can use remove an element, you can just use with the remove. So we'll take that example. So sample set dot remove, and then you can just remove floss and then print it, it's gonna remove that element. What if what you want to remove is not there? What if you are just removing something which is not there at all? Right? It's completely possible, correct? So you are just the string. It's not there. And I'm, I'm just going to remove it. It's a possibility. Will you get an error? Okay. So line number two, uh, what happened? Remove this string. Key error, listen. There is nothing like that. It doesn't have anything like that. So what you can do is you can just check in first. So this is a better way. If this is in this, okay, then remove. Otherwise, it's already not there. So why do we even care? Got it? So you should have an in function first. Okay. So best way to do this is check first. If Listerine in sample set, only then do that, right? And that cools it out and it also removes floss. Okay, moving ahead. Discard, no error, sample set called discard. So discard is also one of the things which is not giving you error. So you, either you can have if statement or you can use discard statement. So discard is better. What does discard do is so you can actually do this 